Hello again everybody, we are on to the last two rounds, which is round 11 and round 12, and I've rectified my mistake and changed my hook, so um, I have actually finished off that last round there now, um, and you can see that actually changing the hook does make a big difference, it does neaten the square up a bit. So this colour is teal if you're working off the original or whichever colour you are using as a substitute. And we need to just checking her right now. <laughs> we need to join. Right, on this round you were supposed to mark the corners, but I never do to be fair. Uh, so we need to join in the centre. So if you've marked them, that's great. But remember again, you've got your five posts. And that the top of that post is just off to the right. That's where you need to insert your hook, okay, to join. So we're going to join by chaining one and then doing three double crochets all in that same corner spot. So that's one, two, and three. So we're back down to doing doubles, okay. And then we need to do one double into the next nine stitches. And I know I've got the right number now. <laughs> so again, you may need to pull your stitches over so that you can make sure that your hook is going into the right identified stitch. And in this case, that's the post there. So the top of the stitch is just there, just off to the right. Okay. So you can just see a bit of daylight peeping through there. Okay, so that's number one. And then off we go. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that takes us nicely to this chain space here. So we must have done something right. Um, and now what it wants us to do is a treble into the next chain space made by waiting one chain on round nine. So this is round 10. Uh, 11, sorry. The, the, tea, the, the fern colour underneath is row 10. So row nine is the olive or the darker colour and it wants us to work a treble around that chain space there. All at the front of the work. So you, your yarn shouldn't be tangled up anyways. Okay. So I'll just do that again in slow motion. So you're yarning over your hook. You need to push that row ten behind. You're going under the chain of the olive, the darker green. And all of your working is going to be at the front of your piece of work. So you then pull up one around that chain. Through two, through two. And that will then meet up with the rest of your row. And then we need to do a DC in each of these three trebles. So again, you need to identify where you're putting your hook for your first stitch. And do three across there, like so. And then we're in a similar position as we were here. So again, yarn over for your treble. You're going through from the front and pulling it up. So it looks like an extra stitch on your hook. It's actually the chain from round um, from round nine. And you're pulling your yarn up. Don't pull don't have your yarn too tight at this point because you don't want to change the look of your piece of work. And then we're going to be putting a double crochet into the next nine stitches so again make sure you identify the top of the first stitch just off to the right at the top so that's one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. That brings us nicely to the centre of the five, the, the fan, the fan of five trebles on that corner there. So we're working in that central stitch, we're putting three doubles into there. That's one, two, three. And then we're working nine across here to the next chain space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll count as right. And again, we're trebling into the into that row there, row nine. Okay. So yarn over, push yarn at round ten out of the way a bit. So you can go under and through to pull up that chain that we did in round nine in the olive and then do a treble so that it all lines up nice and then again three doubles into that fan again making sure you identify the top of the first stitch so there we are brings us back to the next chain space yarn over for the treble so we're going in from the front pulling up through the back and we're only working in the front of the work we're not including row 10 so we just do our treble like so and then nine to the corner Four, eight and nine three in the corner one two and three and then nine working across the top so we're on the side three now Two more and then again we're working around that chain from row nine so we'll yarn over in preparation for the treble from front to back to pull up and then just complete your treble and then we're working into the three in the middle one two and three and then it a treble again into that round nine and then nine off to the corner again so we, again making sure we put the hook in the right place for that first stitch otherwise it could knock your count out all together Split it. I've lost two, four, six, eight, one more. And that takes us nicely to the centre. So I'm just undoing a little bit of a tangle. So three in the corner again to get us around that corner. And then nine to take us to the chain space one two three four five six seven eight nine wrap around for the treble working in a row around nine sorry complete your treble 
working into these three. Now I know this is where my join is, so my middle one's going to be possibly a little more difficult to get into. Again, if you haven't bothered, either change down or use your darning needle just to slacken that off. But it's just because we uh, uh, of the join that's there. But I'd still rather have that join than have a slip knot to negotiate because it can change the look of your piece of work. So we've got the three yarn over for the treble into row nine, round nine. We're not doing rows, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry. And then nine to finish this round without splitting your yarn. So it's on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine now the, the next row is in teal so again I'm, I am going to slip stitch into this first double knot the um, the chain but once I've done this slip stitch done the slip stitch we need to chain three for the next round but I'm going to now weave the joining tail the start tail in first so i can crochet over that in my next round so i'm just going to feed that up the back like so and then we'll continue with our last and final round which is round 12 so that's going to count as our first treble three into the corner which happens to be the central stitch of the three doubles that we started with one two three and then it's a treble in each stitch till we get to the next center of the of the three doubles so we're just going to crochet right along treble stitches all the way See, this is when I feel like we should have some tune going on in the background <laughs> instead of just silence. Uh, there might be something I'll have to look into to sound some background noise. It's not quite so boring when we're doing these rounds where there isn't a lot of change. I'm approaching the corner now. Now you may still have your stitch marker in from previously. If you have, that's great. Especially if you're not confident with um, identifying that centre stitch and where you need to put your hook. <clears throat> now we should have 25 stitches across. And that does not right, so if in doubt, pull it out. Right. 
Now I know that this next stitch is the central stitch but for the purposes of checking that everything is correct I'm going to count. So that's for turning chain in the first three. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. And that takes us to that central stitch there where we need to put three trebles. Two and three and then we doing another 25 along the next stretch and I'm just undoing another tangle that I've just seen so again bear with me you really don't want to hear me sing so the silence is much better at this point so So just put one treble in every single stitch across to finish off the square. So I just had to pull some more yarn out my ball there. Um, right. That one almost completed side two now. I know that's the centre, but again, I'm just going to count. So we've got our three there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Okay. And so now we need three in the corner. That's one. Two and three, and then again twenty five across. Don't want to inadvertently increase like at the hit before and have to pull it out. So. Nearly there, everybody. I know some confident crocheters out there have already completed all their squares. There's been some lovely pictures on our group page, so it's nice to see people having a go. But I, I do understand and appreciate that it can be frustrating if you haven't been crocheting very long, which is one of the reasons why. I volunteered to do these videos for you so that I could help you out and um, hopefully demonstrate some of those more tricky um, stitches or decipher the pattern um, for those who weren't confident with pattern reading either. So again, I'm confident that after this stitch I'm at my central point for that corner but I will count so that's the three one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty two four five so we're on the last corner home street so three into that corner point two and three and then we're just going across the top here and we 
we will only be putting in 24 because the turning chain that we created at the beginning of the round is number 25. So we're nearly there. I just want to show that no, I know this bit here is where I've woven in that um, tail from the jo original join, and I just want to show that it doesn't really hinder where you put your hook because if I pull those stitches, you can still see where you need to be. So weaving it in as you go doesn't hinder where you need to put your hook the only time it may cause an issue was if you were ever crocheting in the back loop only which so far hasn't occurred during this crochet along but even then it still shouldn't cause you too much problem um, like i said it's always big issues to me i'm not a big fan of weaving ends in some people however feel it just it's like the last hurdle it signifies the end of a project and um, it can be quite satisfying from that perspective and that is entirely fine it's not an issue but for me weaving in is not my friend okay so i'm gonna Count these stitches there. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4. Excellent. So I'm going to just snip my end off and pull through and finish like I have with every single round in this particular. And the, so that's the first V, the second V. First V, second V, top V, number three at the top of the turning chain. Pull quite tight, not too tight as to spoil the look though. Down that last one. And I am going to weave across the top. And the reason I am going to weave across the top is because we know that this project is going to be crocheted together. And therefore, this edge is going to be crocheted alongside another edge. And therefore, this end will be crocheted over the top. And so I'm going to weave it in, but it'll be the only one that I don't snip off. I will leave it to snip once the edge has been crocheted together. And then, once that's happened, I will neaten that particular tail up so just do a couple more so down i'm going to turn it over and I snip all these ends off so again just tug scissors down as close as you can without damaging your way because there's nothing brings tears to your eyes more than having to repair something Okay. Like I said, I'm not going to snip that one off. I'm going to weed until I have um, put the pieces together. But that's the back. And I'll just flatten my flower. And that's the front, everybody. It's quite nice. So that's the lily bud. I hope my videos have been helpful. Um, Happy hooking. I know I've still got rounds one to four to do for part two, but I'm going off to have my curry and I'll do them tomorrow when the little miss is at nursery. So um, 
hope these have been really useful for you i hope you've gotten something out of the hints and tips that i've given you and i will speak to you very soon so happy hooking everybody bye <laughs>